Okay guys, this recipe is a fruited loaf. Um, it's got loads of dried fruit in and basically we're gonna do this the day before and we're gonna soak it in a little bit of rum or brandy or starker, I don't even know what this is. So basically we're gonna soak the fruit overnight and that is gonna really bring out the sweetness uh, and give it kind of like, a, like, a, like, like salt, like give it some sort of balance that's gonna carry, carry flavour throughout the bread. So what we're gonna start doing first is taking our uh, flaked almonds and it's 125 grams and just put them on a baking sheet and then we're gonna just pop this into the oven or under the grill just so they lightly toast. And that'll take probably two to five minutes depending on the heat of the oven or grill. So we'll do that first and then I'll move on to the next stage. Okay, and here we have it after, yeah, two to five minutes. We've got a nice array, some a little bit more burnt and some are really nice and pale and light, but that's absolutely fine. So we'll put that on there to cool for a second. We're gonna use some cherry, uh, some cherries, uh, you know, the sweetened cherries. Um, it won't, we need to quarter them, so it's a bit hard, but try and chop them up as best we can, you know? This is like the perfect tea time treat with a nice thick coating of butter, cup of tea with it, proper English stuff. Okay, so we've got there 150 grams of candied cherries um, in this bowl and, and they're chopped up to quarter, half-ish. Uh, we've got in here 150 grams of sultanas in this bad boy, we've got 150 grams of currants, that's going in there. 50 grams of dried apricot, in there they go. In go the cherries. In go the almonds. It's 125 grams, and then we're going to take a gold for this. Should be looking at about two tablespoons, but uh, let's just weigh it and see what I do. So you can do the same. I tend to do a little bit more than I need to. What's that? Let's go with. That's 50 grams there. Give it a good old mix. Sixty grams. Mix that in. Leave it nice and firm. Push it all the way down, just like that. So there's nothing on the edges because you want everything to soak in. Um, and then we're just going to put a bit of cling film over the top and leave that overnight. Or if you're doing it in the day, as long as possible. I do a minimum of two hours but preferably overnight. Okay, so the following day, our uh, mixture kind of, well, it, it, it looks pretty much the same as it, it did yesterday. And you know, you haven't got any liquid at the bottom, and that perfume, oh, it smells a little bit like chocolate, weirdly. Okay, so um, yeah, so they're all nicely marinated there in the sauce. We've got the rest of our ingredients to add now. So starting off with, I've got 500 grams of a strong flour. This is an organic British flour, uh, really, really good. Uh, but you could probably use any flour you wanted, really. It would all give a slightly different uh, texture. Just may want to adjust the milk, the liquid ratio down a little bit. So into this, we're gonna add in nine grams of salt. Now, if we were using uh, unsalted butter, we would just do 10 grams, but because I'm using salted, it's only 60 grams, um, we, we'll stick with just one gram less, so we're going to do 9 grams. Uh, the difference is only a gram, it's not really going to make too much difference in the quality of the day, it will just change the flavour slightly. Then we need 15 grams of yeast. Here we go. 
Now we're going to do the wet ingredients. Um, so we start off with three medium eggs or you can use two large. Preferably if they're kept in the fridge just to chill them a little bit uh, will help. Next up we're going to add in 240 grams of whole milk. Now, if you don't use whole milk uh, at home, then you could use a combination of say 210 grams, 220 grams, sorry, of um, skim, uh, semi-skim milk, and then make the rest up with cream, either single cream or double cream, and that'll just give it a bit more fat. It's not essential, it's not gonna make the whole thing a complete disaster, you'll still make a nice fruit loaf, but that creaminess that you get from the extra fat just makes it a little bit more softer. So. As I said, 240 grams of this stuff. Then we're gonna need 60 grams of butter. Then in a little pot, I'm just gonna take 40 grams of caster sugar. Now you may think it's a sweet bread, is 40 grams really enough? And actually when you combine it with the amount of sweetness we're gonna get from the fruit, then yes, yes, definitely it is. So, we're not gonna add the sugar and the butter in at the start because adding those in at the start, um, kind of well, the, the, the butter will go around the gluten strands, just like oil does, it, you know, it just makes things greasy, it makes it harder to break down. Um, so actually it will affect the quality of the dough. Um, and the sugar as well, that changes how the gluten works, it changes how the um, yeast fermentation works. So just leave it out to the end if you can. Um, there is argument, I think I said it in the previous video, that if you've got less than 5% sugar or 5% fat, then it doesn't really matter, it can go in at the start. But hey, let's just try and keep it as straightforward as we can and just always try and put them in at the end. So, we're gonna add uh, these two bad boys, so that's the salt, yeast, flour, um, the milk, and the eggs. In these go, and then we'll mix it on slow for five minutes, then we'll crank it up to fast for probably three minutes, then we'll chuck in the sugar, the butter, and then lastly, we're then gonna put it on slow, and then we're going to incorporate these ingredients. The dough is now quite strong, you can feel that strength in there. Okay, so now we're gonna add our butter. Ooh, which obviously we couldn't sell this bread because it's been on the floor, but I don't mind eating it. So you can break it up a little bit, it's not the end of the world because it's gonna smash up, it's nice and soft anyway. So in that goes, back on fast. Okay, so our dough now has literally just changed form. It's, it just changed its colour slightly um, as it's now perfectly oxidised. It's just holding its shape, it's nice and smooth. So we're now going to add our fruit. Now it's really, really important now that we change the speed to low. And we just gently mix this dough. Um, and the whole point now is no more dough fermentation going on in here. We are just literally trying to incorporate the ingredients as evenly as possible. It probably won't be perfect, and we've got to accept that, but we can help that out a little bit when we're folding it. 
um, because we will be leaving this to rest and in that time the ingredients will loosen up, they'll disperse a little bit. When we do a fold you won't notice a difference at all really. So let's give this a little mix for probably about one to two minutes. Okay, so it's mixed for about one and a half minutes. Um, we don't want to leave it any longer at all. The more you mix it, the more the chance of, uh, the more we mix, the more the chance that the fruit's going to get bashed and smashed up on the edges. And that not only is going to mean you're going to have irregular fruit, but it will also taint the color of the dough. It will taint the flavor of the dough as well. So, I'm going to chuck this bad boy in here. This is just the bowl that we used to soak the fruit in. Normally we use a floured bowl, but it's all going to get muddled up and mixed around anyway, so let's best not incorporate any extra flour. And so here's our dough. It's just been put in this table here. We can give it a little mix around with our hands just to incorporate the ingredients a little bit more. Nothing too violent. Nothing too perfect either. So, we're gonna now leave this for an hour and a half, and halfway through we're gonna give it a fold. So after 45 minutes we'll give it a fold, and that should just rearrange all the ingredients, get a bit of strength into the dough, a bit more strength into the dough, and um, yeah, that really, really helped the, the final stage. And then after an hour and a half, we'll then divide it, and then we'll start the final proof for these beautiful fruit loaves. Maybe we'll do a few baps, a few rolls too. Before we leave this dough to rest, um, I'm just going to put a dough thermometer through it just to see what's going on. Because I need to decide whether I'm going to put this in the fridge or whether I'm going to leave it out in the ambient air. Now bear in mind we've got quite a lot of yeast in this so it is going to want to get going. Um, yeah, 23 and a half degrees. So really we want to be 22, just below 22. So it's a little bit warm. So what I'm going to do is do the, at least the first rest, uh, the first 45 minutes in the fridge. And that just cool the dough down a little bit. Otherwise it's going to get really, really hard to mould, really, really sticky. And the fermentation is going to be a bit too fast. So in the fridge for the first 45 minutes, if you're below 25, 22 degrees basically, uh, if you're above 22 degrees, then you want to be in the fridge, okay? Okay, 45 minutes in and our dough is now ready for its first and only fold. So we're going to dust the surface because this is going to be a little bit sticky. Okay, then using our scraper, Trying to do a nice clean cut. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, I'm just give it a temperature probe just to see what the temperature is now. 22.4. Okay. So, I'm going to give this a stretch as much as we can. Fold that side over, that side over, and then turn it over. This side, that side over, and I'm just going to do one fold over like that. Happy days. So that now we'll put some flour into the bowl this time, and because of all the grease and the fat on the outside, it's just clinging to the bowl. That acts as a nice little barrier there. In this goes. Okay, we'll put that covered. Uh, we won't put it back in the fridge. 22 degrees is fine. Um, and yeah, we'll leave it for another 45 minutes before we then, before we're going to divide and shape our fruit loaves and our rolls. Okay, so our fruit loaf dough has now rested for about an hour and a half um, and it's then partly in the chiller which is going to just, in the fridge, which is going to drop the temperature down a little bit. Um, so next up, we're going to start dividing. So I've got my little... Uh, flour and semolina sort of mix over there, so I didn't waste it. We're going to give it a good old uh, flour on the table. Then using our plastic dough scraper, 
get this dough out because it will be a little bit sticky. Um, and then I'm going to chuck a little bit of flour, semolina mixture on the top. And um, don't usually say let's add more flour to it. Let's tr I'll try and hold back as best as possible. But it is quite handy to not have it too sticky. So we're going to divide this now into our shapes. Um, let's go with about 500 grams. 470, I can live with that. Okay, 485 in that one. Okay, so we've got three even weights. Um, we've got a little bit left over. 100 gram. It's getting sticky now. So we've got 68, 69, that'll do. Okay. So I'm going to do these two little rolls first. So it's basically just a bit of leftover dough that I'm just going to see what happens if we try and turn it into a bun. It, it, they may be pretty poor, but because I've not actually done it before, but we'll see. So I'm just going to make a couple little rounds. Um, a bit of flour around the outside of these fruited buns actually puts a layer over the top, which gives a kind of a softer finish as opposed to the fruit sticking out of the out of the wrapped bar, bun. I'll find a tray for them in a second. Next up, we're just going to mould these into a round. If your hands get a bit sticky, instead of washing them all the time, because that's going to slow everything down, just rub them in a bit of flour like I just did then. So, we've got three little beauties over there. Uh, I'm going to get a tray for these and we're going to prepare the tins to bake these little breads, loaves off with. Okay, so I've got uh, just a baking sheet here. Fair enough, it is quite large, but it's the only one I have to hand that will take a hot enough temperature. So on these little baps, they can just go straight on like that. Okay, just like that. And they can be put away onto another surface. Normally we'd use some metal tins similar to these. Um, however, these are quite small. These are less than 500 grams. So what I'm going to do is take one of these in half and make that 250 uh, roughly. And so that's going to go in there. And then we're then going to get um, our larger loaves and we're going to put them in here. So what I'm then going to do is combine these two together and put them in one of these. So I only need one. Uh, what these are are called pamboas. Um, basically, they are a wooden little box like that. And you also get a cover, which is like, it's generally a single use, but sometimes you can use them a couple of times. Um, and that just sits in there like that. And it's just an alternative for using a bread tin. Personally, I prefer to use these because I've used these all my life, uh, but I don't have one the right size, so it's, it's these things way to go. Start off with this. And again, I'm just going to put a little bit of flour onto the table. So yeah, just flatten that out. And then just as we did word with the tin loaf, push the sides in, roll towards, roll towards, roll towards. Happy day. So that can then just get popped in there like that. Change it. Okay, and then this one here. Again, get pushed in, turn the sides in. Don't have to turn the sides in. Uh, roll round, roll round, roll round. There we go. In there, like that. We've got two beautiful little fruit loaves ready to go. Now we've still got this other one. What to do with the other one? For that, we're going to use just a little uh, banneton. So let's just uh, drizzle that in flour. And well, it's a flour and semolina mix, this anyway. So, yeah, that's going to look really, really cool. Then, 
as we did with the other one. But just bear in mind we want it slightly longer. So we're going to stretch it out a little bit more on the sides here. Okay, fold the sides in, roll round, roll round, roll round, in like that and just give it a little roll with our hands, make sure it's nice and strong, brilliant. That then seam goes up, if we want to, actually see how it's splitting a little bit there, we're going to actually just, with our fingers, just push it together a little bit, like that, roll it around like that and the seam is almost gone. pop in on top just like that. Then round the outside just a little bit of flour just to stop it sticking from the edges and hopefully that will stick, that will not stick at all. So we now have three loaves, three fruit loaves ready to prove. We'll leave these to prove, probably take about an hour and a half depending on the temperature. The temperature will make a massive difference to this because it's um, it will just go when it's ready to go. So about an hour and a half roughly. So I get the oven on now. Um, we're only going to bake at about 180 degrees because of the amount of sugar in there. We want to make sure the inside gets baked. So we're going to... And here we have it. These beautiful doughs are ready to go in the oven. So we've got two loaves and the way to tell that they're done is they do take a little while sometimes and it did take a long, longer than the hour and a half. It took about two and a half hours in the end. And the way to tell that they're done is that you can just see them sitting up above the uh, top of the loaf. And also, when you're looking in like that, you can see that the dough is firmly, not just slightly touching the sides, but it's quite, it's, it's well in there. And that just says that, you know, we're ready, we're done, we're done. Uh, with this one here, this little beauty, we're going to chuck it on a peel on the side there like that and try and brush off as much flour as we possibly can. So what I've had to do is every half hour, yeah probably about every half an hour, is get a bit of water on my hands, so I've got a jug or a cup and just rub it on the top of the surface and that stopped the skinning up. With the rolls I kind of forgot a little bit. Uh, I did these, thought it was done, and then come back to them. Oh yeah, the rolls, yeah. So they haven't really proved as well as I'd hoped. But what we'll do is we'll put these in, and then we'll put the rolls in afterwards, and just, well, we'll, we'll see how they go. But the idea of this loaf is that it's that this dough is a fruit loaf, not really a, a roll. Uh, we'll put the top and bottom heat on as soon as we put them in, and they won't take that long because of the gold, you know, the, the colour in them. I reckon they'll take, they should take about 25 minutes at about 180. So we're going to put that in now and we'll see how they get on. Okay, so now we just tip our bread out of the tins. I'm loving the colour on that floured one. Well, there you go. Okay, to finish these beautiful fruit loaves, uh, what we do is we're going to take some apricot jam. Um, you can make your own kind of uh, glaze if you wanted to. You can use mead, apples, uh, or you can use the apricots yourself. But you know, just get some apricot jam that you know really does give a professional result on its own, and it's pretty easy to get hold of. So. We're just going to spread a little bit of apricot jam. We just warmed it up in a saucepan. If you've got a microwave, you may prefer to use that. If I had a microwave, I would. And as you can see, it gives a really nice kind of sheen to the bread. When you compare it to the other one, you think, wow, that one looks so much better. So, uh, on we go with this one. And depending on what you want, you can put it on the sides as well. Just remember to do all four if you are going to do the sides. There you 
have it. So you've got this little beauty here with a bit of flour on. Um, it's not really recommended that you put apricot jam on top of that because it will, I'll show you what it will do, it will kind of just brush it away, <laughs> brush it away really. Uh, but you know, that's up to you. If you want to kind of lose a bit of the flour then now's a good time to do it. Um, then lastly, what we did was I've toasted a few more almond flakes and then we can just sprinkle these on top and of course the apricot jam we get it at the right time but it's still not quite set yet it's gonna act as a glue it's gonna stick and while we're here and while we're here we can also get a bit of icing sugar just dust on top of this little beauty Best for a sieve, but, but hey, that looks beautiful. You've got two lovely loaves, and also this almost a bloomer, <laughs> a fruit loaf there. That is absolutely beautiful. You can freeze these really well as well, and I really recommend that you do them in a little batch where you can then freeze a couple, have, a, have one fresh, because they're great toasted, they're great use, and yeah, I really recommend you give them a go. Let me know how you get on in the comments below.